Testing, 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 testing. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, oh man. So uh, yeah, I've been waiting for this a long time. I've already played through it because what well, the intent was to play this on a stream and uh, make this video whilst doing it, but uh, didn't go so well. Mm. Sure, I've been here already, but fuck it. What is this level? Oh, God. What has happened to this game? I am just lost in whatever the hell this first level is supposed to be. Am I missing something? Are you guys seeing something that I'm not? God. Please tell me this isn't what the rest of the game is like now. I really, really love the demo, man. I... Oh, I can't. I can't. Uh... There's no more tickets in there. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> ten, right? I'm assuming there's ten. Please, no more. Oh, my. This is boring. Supposed to be like a. It was a liminal space horror game. Oh, Lila! Nope. 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 Nope, 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 nope. Jesus Christ, this is dull. Uh, hold 20. Yeah, no. Oh, my God. I guzzle his shit. <laughs> There's twenty tickets just there. So, uh, because it launched uh, with uh, some issues that. Uh, and I got stuck in the beginning session, but you know, uh, some people might remember I made a video on this, the uh, the demo of this from a year ago, and it was pretty damn special. I love Animaplus, and I studied it in a in a whole a whole bunch of ways from a game dev perspective. I've actually learned a lot about three D game dev since then, because I just wanted to. And actually, this game partially inspired me to. Um, learn a bit more about how 3D game dev works and things, learn about shaders. And so I actually learned quite a lot more 3D stuff that I didn't know when I last did this. So I'm going to study it again, but now it's the full game. It's called Animaplus Chapter 1. I'm not holding out for Chapter 2 to be anytime soon, so I just take this on its own merits as it is. Uh, but I've got uh, a whole lot to say about it. I've got some criticisms, which I didn't of the demo, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I still love it, uh, especially since they did the update. I'm just going to start playing. I'm going to talk about it as I play. Animoiapolis. So I mentioned last time, Animoia. Animoia is the feeling of nostalgia for a time, place, or situation where you weren't actually there. So you have a look at, uh, you know, stuff from the 70s, uh, and it, but you're, you weren't alive then and go, oh man, that makes me feel, you almost feel like you're nostalgic, even though you're, uh, you weren't there. And that's what Animoia means. And so this game is Animoiapolis. Uh, I said it in the old video that I'm not sure about the name because, I mean, it's a great name, but it's hard one to remember, to pronounce, to know what to search for. But what the hell do I know? It's doing really well uh, based on the Steam page anyway. Why are I going to resume game? I'm not supposed to resume game. Idiot. But we have started. Okay. So Animoiapolis, we are... I have no sound. Uh. It was my headset. It was off. That's what I'm doing the worst. Anyway, so <laughs> First thing I noticed compared to the demo is I don't, well, I do know, but uh, in the new full version of the game, you don't know why he's arrived here. Because it used to be like a um, little opening where he left a answer message on his uh, his wife's um, 
and his wife's answer machine. I assume it's his wife, but he was like, uh, oh, you know, leave the curry, put the curry in the fridge because I'm going to be late because this generator, he's, the guy is an electrician, clearly, this generator has been sucking up like 30 times more power than it's supposed to. Uh, and they'd never built anything here, so I need to go and check it out. Uh, strange that this that this context is gone now. Um, but uh, maybe you know, maybe sometimes it's better to not know what you're doing. Nemoi Apolis. Anime Apolis. Anime Apolis. It's where all the weebs live. Anime Apolis. Nemoi Apolis. I think that's it. It's a good thing to have at the start of the game when the name's like, oh, you know, everybody says, oh, I want to play Anem. Uh, how do you, how do you say that? Well, he just told you after three attempts. <laughs> I play with a controller. If you got a problem with that, go outside. I like controllers. Maybe someone needs to audit the last auditor of this spot. Yeah, I agree. Did somebody tamper with this? That doesn't look up to code. Well, it's even hooked up. Look how... So it's gone for a lot. I've seen some, some complaints about this, but I think it's good. It's gone for a heavy bloom uh, effect and uh, lens flare and stuff since the demo. But it adds to that look of those liminal space photographs you see, you know, and there's a there's a film grain going on here as well. Uh, I just realized I'm in ultra wide, but I'm recording it in 16 by 9. Hi, welcome to Nemoiapolis. God damn. Um, I'm, I, look, I'm not a YouTube person, okay? I'm just doing this because I like the game and I like studying stuff. This isn't what I do. Okay, so it goes, oh, shit. So I don't know if I missed it there or what, but there was a really cool thing in the demo where it almost goes to show a tutorial on how to use the electrical panel there. So it's a real surprise when you fall down because you thought you were about to... There's the... Uh, I like that little feature. There's the, the little panel that you were standing on. <laughs> and we're in. I should be dead right now. Where am I? Hello? Hello? Is anybody here? So, <laughs> the... Um, uh, interesting, one of the f things that's changed is that he used to say, well, at least the water's warm. And now you can hear him go, <laughs> like, shivering. So <laughs> I guess since the demo, the water got cold. Yeah, so this area here, uh, same as it was. Uh, we've got a new thing that you might be able to see or you might not, depending on quality but the, there's like smudge smudges on the screen but you only see it when you're looking at something bright i believe that's a bloom texture which where the way these lights bloom out like that um there's actually a texture that gets applied over the top of those to make this this the camera lens look dirty um i always i'm never sure how i feel about camera lens effects like lens flares and uh, dirt and stuff in a first person game because i was like well my eyes aren't cameras but then there's always this whole thing of wanting things to look like film, you know, uh, and a first person film would have those things. Uh, but yeah, I sometimes wonder, especially when you see a great big lens flare in like a first person game. All right, so this guy is in, again, I'm not sure why the little intro dialogue is gone, but this guy is an electrician, so he knows how to do these panels, which is one of the game's few sort of mechanics and you'll see some interesting things uh, as this goes on especially if you saw my old video of this you got the beautiful screen space reflection there i'll show you something cool about uh reflections in games right there is at least uh, up until you start using ray tracing which is still kind of in its infancy and you know with vr and nintendo switch and arm processors and the future kind of being in not entirely the future, but a lot of it being in sort of needing to do more with less power. I, I still think ray tracing is a way off before it becomes full on, you know, if it even does ever. So we use these raster effects to create, to generate reflections. And this game does a great job of those. It's it's interesting because it's been the difference between, I mean, Anime Opolis uses, Anime Opolis uses a lot of uh, kind of areas where the walls are all like the same color. 
uh, and everything's kind of almost uniform uh, with not much texture on it, like a very subtle, well, you can see a bit more there, but there's just sort of a subtle plaster texture and things. But what really helps it to look super, super sort of polished is its use of reflections from the Unity uh, high definition, uh, uh, what's it called? The high definition render pipeline. And the way this is achieved, it's an interesting, there's two methods, right? One, check out these lights up here, so these eight lights. When they reflect down, you can see the reflection over here, which it's a weird that it reflections all the way over here, right? But look at it following me around. So the reflection's coming all the way over here with me. It's almost as if that is in the sky and it's miles away with the reflection, right? And that's because this is this, this reflection here is uh, achieved using what is called a cube map or a... Um, so you gotta imagine it like in the middle of this room, there is, there was, during development in the middle of this room, there was a thing called a reflection probe, which is like a camera, right? But think of it like the Google car that goes around taking the street view pictures. So, you know, it takes those 360 degree pictures that you can use on street view and you can actually click around in them. Well, imagine it's 360 degrees that way, but it also goes up and down as well. So it's a total spherical picture that it's taken of this room. And then when it draws any shiny surface, it, it uses that information from that picture to decide what gets reflected. Because unless I'm looking at them, the, the rendering doesn't know that that exists. Because otherwise every single thing in the game would have to be rendered all the time and it would be impossible and it would run like shit. So the problem with that is that it doesn't know, because it's a photo, it's not 3D. So it doesn't know how far away anything is. So these lights are just following me around because for all it knows, those lights are the sun way up in the sky that would parallax with me like this. Um, there's a solution to it, especially in interior rooms called box projection, where you basically tell the reflection how far away it is. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that Animapolis doesn't box project the cube maps uh, into the rooms. That would be a nice... If there was one thing I'd, it would be cool to see an update would be the box projection. Anyway, I'm a nerd. Uh, but the other cool thing is... Check out how how much more realistic and accurate the reflection of the um, the diving board and steps here is. But so this this is the we achieve reflection with two different things at the same time, generally. Uh, and there is that the cube maps, and that is you that is good for if I'm not looking at those lights, I can see the reflection, but I'm not looking at them. Right? Remember I said that the the game doesn't really know anything exists unless I'm looking at it. At least the renderer doesn't. What a screen space reflection does, let's look down at this, you can see this reflection here. Well, watch what happens when I look down. Oh, it's gone. The reflection just appears and disappears. And same when the puddles, you see all the, these reflections appear and disappear. And then you can only see the cube map reflection. And so what we, we combine those two things because the idea is a screen space reflection. Well, it knows what's on screen. So it just uses what's on screen to create a reflection of it. It just grabs those pixels. Draws them again, but upside down, but with, you know, all the kind of warping and diffusing that's required based on the surface that it's on. And generally, until somebody shows you this, you don't notice that A, these reflections are not lining up with that, and B, these other reflections that do line up disappear when I look away from the things that they're reflecting. And what we tend to do, we, we combine the two. So there's never no reflections, right? This, this floor doesn't suddenly become doesn't lose its shininess when I look down at it because there are the cube maps. Uh, some engines like um, Unreal and stuff, they do have some other methods. Uh, and there is another method uh, which is used in Unity as well, which you see later in Animiapolis, which is a really good one, but they're a bit more expensive. There's things like cone, cone tracing and stuff like which games like Control use. But in this case, in this case, these work pretty great. I, I do wish that these cube maps were box projected. Basically, you tell the, you, you have a like a big uh, box shape and you show it the exact box of this room and then you tell the cube map this box projected and then it knows how far away stuff is. It's not very good, like it wouldn't do a very good reflecting this that's in the middle of the room, but everything around the edges of the room would reflect beautifully there. Um, it's just a checkbox in Unity in the... Bridge the gap. I remember thinking when I first played the demo of this, if I landed somewhere like this, what would I think, right? And there's a lot of these horror games and horror movies and well, general games and movies where 
character either believes things too fast or is like, yeah, right. It's like, what would, what conclusion would I jump to if I found myself falling into an underground swimming pool? And I keep thinking, like, I would think that I'd found some secret Freemasons, like a stonemason uh, a club, <laughs> you know? Maybe that's what Animaeopolis is. So this thing, these they move, All right? So this is where a cube map works amazingly well, is uh, uh, a concave, concave, convex, I was getting muddled up, uh, metal object because it can grab and these these mirrors here that you can't see my character in them but that's the cube map is perfect for that though uh, but on flat surfaces they can be a little messy and what we do here is spin that so this room i wonder if this room was one of the first ones that was made because it just doesn't quite look as good as the rest of the game um, I mean, it's got that crazy liminal space look to it. And that's why I love this game, by the way. I didn't go into this, but the concept of liminal spaces, I'll talk about more in a little while. But um, so something's going on with the water here. It doesn't refract any of the stuff underneath it. And it just kind of looks like a, it's a nice surface. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that there compared to how good it looks in the rest of the game. Um, the... The sort of dirt on the lens and the noise effect that's been added since the demo really helps this area, though. It really does look like those liminal space photos you see. There's a snag on these stairs that I can't move past sometimes. Z fighting there as well. Okay, so what I have to do is get the water coming out here and point it at the electric lock. Zzz. Messed it up. So yeah, the, the the intro you know confirmed that the guy is an electrician, but um, he uses a lot of his sort of electrician skills, at least in the the, the areas that were in the demo. Uh, so it's in, it's surprising that that's gone. Right, so normally we would go to the lazy river from here, or normally in the demo we went to the lazy river, which is the famously amazing uh, liminal space level design and stuff. But uh, things get different here. In fact, we are in this is the locker rooms. And actually, I do quite like these locker rooms as well. Love the carpet. I don't know what it is. Just even just that corner is like, it feels like a hotel, right? I know it's not, maybe it is, it is some kind of resort or something, but um, you always think of hotel hallways with those humming lights and stuff. Is anybody here? Here's an interesting one here. Look, we're looking at, I, sh I think, is this a cube map? See the way this kind of, see how the reflection warps there? That implies to me that it's a cube map, uh, which was what I was talking about before. We've got a combination of cube. This is an interesting combination of the cube maps and the screen space reflections. As I look to the side, uh, the details of the room appear in the mirror, at least the ones that it can see. And as I look away, they go away again because, but yeah, look, it's interesting. You can see like the kind of ghost of the. It's a very interesting uh, mirror effect. Um, there's a best thing for mirrors, really, if you really have to do them, is uh, planar reflection, which we'll see some later. But they're also really, you know, expensive on performance. So it effectively adds a second camera to the game that's looking at in, back in the other direction. Turlets. Can't you use the turlet? Uh, do you know what? I hate American bathroom stalls. I hate them. Whenever I go to the US, if I'm in um, uh, Texas or Boston or wherever, they got these like, th when you close the door, there's these gaps at the top of the bottom. When you close the door, there's a, like an inch gap here. And people just look straight in and that's, that's, that's an interesting toilet fact for the day. We don't have those in Europe, or at least not in the UK. Um, So look at this, this game uses some reflection to make stuff look super, super shiny. And in a, not a realistic way as such, much more sort of stylized, but it does help it feel uh, really beautiful compared to a lot of other indie games of this type. Here's some Jordan music there. So sometimes there's some tickets lying around here. Yeah, you have to collect tickets and I'll Explain that in a few. Good tunes. 
Okay, no tickets in here. It's interesting, currently I'm still playing a linear game, right? We fell into that pool and I'm wandering from one area to the next, trying to find my way out, which I thought is what any map list was going to be. Um, but it's a little different. Another showers. I forgot about this room. The hum of the lights. So good in this game. It's so loud and over exaggerated. It's great. It's the strangest thing. There's a motorbike outside. It's the strangest thing because just like those liminal space photos and things that, you know, they feel weirdly off, but also weirdly comfortable, right? Like I want to walk on this carpet and I want to be in a big open area like this. It makes me think of hotels, conventions and stuff and places where I've got a lot of happy memories in places like that, but also it just feels weird and off. All right, so there's the first lot of tickets. Flex tickets, they are a the game's, not currency, they're the, this game's stars or, or, or jiggies or keys. Really cool thing, the footsteps sounds actually go left, right, left, right, left, right in your ears. And the controller actually uses the two um, the two motors in either side go, and it rumbles left, right, left, right, left, right. When you run like that as well, it's really immersive. Pardon me. I don't have a nice fitting beer for this game like I usually do um, because, well, I had one. When I did the live stream that was supposed to become this video, I, had a beer from a brewery called Nostalgia, which seemed fitting. The beer was called Sorted, and it was good. Um, it was maybe a little, uh, little watery for my taste, but I've drank it now. It's gone, so I couldn't use it for this one. Not that anybody cares, but <laughs> yeah, it was from Beer 52. So I said, I am drinking today coffee, cold coffee. I like cold coffee. It's like a liminal space, right? It's like a, a nice warm drink that you're familiar with, but without the warmth. Right, so it's like a hotel without. It's this feeling of, if you've ever worked in a public place, like well, in, in like a, re, not retail, in like a place like a hotel, etc. And it's like when everybody's gone home, maybe a theater, places like that, when everybody's gone home and you're closing up, you're just like, it's just this weird, it's just carpet and walls and it feels so strange. All right, when we get in this elevator, things are gonna change. So when I first started streaming this, I was like, when am I going to get to the Lazy River? I love the Lazy River, because I thought that that was going to be the start of the game. Because the demo was this absolute masterpiece of atmosphere uh, and in the, the level of the Lazy River. Uh, but actually, I thought that it was going to be you'd start there because you did like, you know, you landed in a swimming pool and you went through this whole pool and spa. And when you exited the pool and spa, when you actually and on your way out, there's an entrance. So you're like, ah, I've come through the back way and I'm making my way out gradually and then into a mall. And, you know, I think the idea was, I wish, I think that that was originally the plan. I think it was originally going to be a linear trek through all these spaces just to find your way out with these panels. But somewhere along the line, uh, the design changed. Um, I, this is, again, this is an assumption. It might have always been intended to be like this, but... Uh, uh, for better or worse, I, the hub world idea grew on me, and the tip, especially after an update. But yeah, we are now in what is this game's hub world. Okay, I'll show you. And then these tickets are lying around still. And uh, let's just look how nice this looks. Good. This great big skylight here. And there are reflection, doing, the screen space reflection doing a great job of making this floor look really shiny and real. Again, watch, I'll look down and it sort of disappears. See how it sort of disappears? The detailed version disappears and gets replaced with a less detailed reflection, which is the cube map. It's, uh, if done right, there you go. You can see the, the, the detailed reflection kind of giving way to the less detailed cube map reflection. It can be really effective way of, you know, avoiding the crazy stuff like ray tracing. There it is again. See how we look down but there's still the reflection of the roof because that detail got caught in the cube map, but that roof moves with me. Uh, I believe it's actually been box projected in here. It does stay lined up, so that's cool, uh, but it doesn't 
you know, it's never as well lined up as a screen space reflection, but it works. If you're playing games on like Nintendo Switch or kind of low end games or things using Unity's, um, what is it called? The uh, standard render pipeline, universal render pipeline. Generally, they're going to use the cube maps and probably not the screen space reflection. Um, so here's how Animopolis goes now. We have these doorways here with these elevators, which say you need. So this one, you need 40 tickets to use this elevator. I have 10. So this is Princess Peach's castle and the tickets are the stars, except you spend them. So if I go in here, I will spend 40 tickets. and I'll lose them. They don't stay like stars do. So that's 40 to get into there. Um, and uh, this was what my, my first major complaint about the full game. So there's 100 get. So they have lowered the number of tickets to get into each one as well, which is good. Since the at launch, this was 120 tickets to get into Family Tropical Resort. And there's the picture of the water and stuff there. And I was like, yeah, this is the bit from the demo. And they've held it up until the very end, or at least right near the end of the game. Uh, now, thankfully, there are enough tickets around the game that you can kind of tackle them in your own order. But before, they were all. <laughs> so the tickets you needed to look for were all in this hub area, almost all of them. Except for here, the sale zero tickets, where there were only five tickets in there. At least only five spawned when I played it. And uh, I didn't find any of the ones in here because the tickets are white and this area is white. It was hard to find them. And being that this was free, so you didn't have to wander around finding the tickets first. I would just spent hours and hours wandering around this first level looking for the damn tickets. And I felt I considered that to be quite bad conveyance of the game's mechanics and stuff. So first I'm going to wander around here finding some tickets. Um, anyway, Apolis is about empty spaces. That's something that Andrew Quist, the developer, said in his, one of his earliest videos of it. He said he, he knows empty. So he never said liminal spaces. He said empty spaces. Now, liminal spaces, these are very much the liminal spaces. And, you know, the whole concept of liminal spaces fascinates me. There's some more tickets. We've got 15. Um, the whole concept fascinates me. And I find the pictures and so, less so the back rooms because it's been so done to death now. But um, the whole concept of liminal space, it fascinates me. But you can see why I walked straight past all this stuff and missed a lot of the tickets early on. Because I find this area here to be maybe too empty. And some of the others in the since demo as well. Because the demo, the, um, the Lazy River demo, it was... It felt so... Even though it was completely dead, there was nobody there. It felt so sort of lived in. Like it was really created for people to be there. Like you can imagine what a busy day there was like. But you just happened to be there... We've happened to find it abandoned and empty, and that's the liminal space concept, right? This, it does certainly does have a liminal space feel to it, but it almost looks like it's just been built and hasn't been populated yet. Um, even though there's a voiceover, there's a there's a tannoy. That was another thing that confused me, and it's something I talk about in terms of game design. We'll get there. Okay, I'd really like to be able to check how many tickets I've got, but you can only see how many tickets you've got when either you've just collected some or when you try to enter one of the elevators so and there's an interesting thing as well which kind of goes along with the the voice on the tannoy and my opinions on it right so the closed doors here but where's the button gone well the closed doors here are so that you can replay the closed elevator doors those are so you can replay the levels you've already done so that is actually the intro level that we just did where we went through the pool and the changing rooms but there's a 75 tickets sign here, but it's free to go back and replace. So there's, you know, some people like maybe it was originally going to cost 75 tickets, maybe originally going to start in here or what. But no, I think that this is supposed to be for the kind of verisimilitude, as they call it, which is to make the game feel like a world. So in this game's world, in the whole idea of people use tickets to pay for these elevators, I think this ticket, this elevator would have cost 75 if you hadn't. If you had come in this way and you hadn't already done it and the problem with that is i think sometimes sometimes the it's it's more important that you convey to the player than you have a believable world right so i always say that games are kind of like musicals in the sense that if i 
in the story of I don't know if I told you that if somebody told you the story of the Little Mermaid, it doesn't involve singing and dancing. That is not in the story. That's just how the story is told, right? It's not in the diegesis of that story. It's just a method of story. And similar in video games, in the story of Ocarina of Time, right? In the story of the Hero of Time, there's no point in that story where the hero breaks into people's houses and starts throwing their crockery and their pots and stuff around and, and finding money inside to pay for a shield. That's just the game mechanic. It's just how the story is told and how you interact with it. Um, so this, <laughs> this roll of 20 tickets, sometimes they spawn on these things. Because I think the tickets are spawned randomly. But my first time I played it, I'll show you this level in a minute, but I wandered around that level for so long looking for tickets, having found only five, because I knew if I come back, I wouldn't have enough to go to any other levels. And then when I came back and realized there's a few scattered around here, and then suddenly there's 20 on here, I just lost it. And I, and I rage quit. How many have I got now? Right, so now I have 50. So there are 55 tickets around here, but the first, the conference center here is free, right? Now the tickets, you don't need a certain number of tickets to finish the game. You just need them to access the levels, but you have to have gone through the levels once. So even though there are only a few tickets in the conference center here, I do have to do the level. And well, I will show you why there's a, in my opinion, there's a simple fix that would make this whole game a trillion times better. Um, don't get me wrong, I still do like this game a lot, but it went from, the demo was a masterpiece and this is just a good game. Uh, but uh, I think that somewhere along the line, the choice to change into this hub world, it, I think maybe it was the wrong choice, but I kind of blame Steam and their, you know, you can refund if you haven't played for more than two hours policy for devs elongating games with stuff like this. I, I don't blame them. Uh, but I think this should have had, this first, the first level should have had a ticket price and not been zero because that would have shown you that there are tickets around here too, right? Like if you can't exit, then you can't. If you couldn't go in here, then you would know. Okay, I need to find something around here. And then say it was ten tickets, then you know there is tickets around here because you're forced to look for some, right? Maybe fifteen because in the early area there were some too. Anyway, free access. Down we go. This is something weird that happens as well, which I'm not sure if this was something that was going to be in the game and changed or what, but now that I've come down this elevator, this has changed to say 10 tickets, but I can't insert 10 tickets and go back up. I find that a little strange. And I think in one level, it even had a sign that said 10 tickets outside it. So I find that a little strange. Um, I wondered if it was just that it switched to a different texture or what, but... Um, I wondered if the plan was if you wanted to leave the area and go back rather than search for the exit, then you could spend 10 tickets to do so maybe, but I, I, I don't know. But I think that, that that threw me off because what happens, I looked around here trying to find, finally got 10 tickets and then ran all the way back to the elevator again, thinking this was another one, an exit, but it wouldn't work. Uh, and it's, um, again, it's conveyance. It's not that the tickets are necessarily really, really bad. It's just conveying how it works. Now, I'm being a little bit negative, I realize, but it's because all of the really, really good parts of Animiapolis are later on in the game. Um, oh, great music. So again, we have the walls and carpets and, and not much else thing. And that's a cool, you know, it's the backrooms concept, you know, where you're just lost in this confusing I'm not sure if this stage is procedurally generated or not because I've often I've played it a few times and it has come out similar. Um, you have to go down a ramp and stuff, but I get lost here, and I think that again I mean this with the greatest of respect for this game. This is just uh, critique, but I think making this the first level after the intro was a terrible idea. No offense to the developer because. Suddenly you're wandering around here looking for tickets or for an exit elevator and it's it can be Sometimes you can take forever to find anything other times you get there right away, but the point is it's like The you know any my Apple one of the the best liminal space game There is still now not not just the demo, but the full game is the best liminal space game you can play uh, That includes the complex found footage, which is 
probably a close second. At least out of all the ones that I've played. I don't want you to be too arrogant and pretend I've played all of them. But this area here, I mean, aside from the fact that it's grey, blue and white with some red carpet and not yellow, this is just another Backrooms game right now. And it's really... Oh, 50 tickets! Nice. So it's really... Uh, it can be so off-putting. You might... I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people got to this point, got lost and bored and refunded, and that would be a terrible shame. Um, it's not a bad level per se, but it's just, it doesn't sell what the rest of this game is at all. Um, and when it first launched, there was only five tickets, at least in my game, there was only five tickets you could find in this whole area, so it wasn't enough to continue. And as I said, because I didn't know there were, one, there were ones in the... Um, in the actual hub world, in the the lobby, the mall court, whatever it's called, uh, I thought that was it, uh, and that I was just wandered around here for hours, lost, trying to find where the hell to go, and really wound me up. I think that I'd say the best fix for that would be just this first door shouldn't be free; it should cost some tickets. You should have to wander around the hub world and find some first. Then the game would have showed you that no, tickets aren't. You know, is, they're not just in here. Uh, but yeah, um, and I'll get to it in a little while, but I do think there would be one s small change that would absolutely fix pretty much everything. I mean, again, I'm still a little disappointed that it's not a long linear trek, starting with the Lazy River from the demo, going into, the, to, into a mall and then to a theatre, because it all appears, there's a lot of parts, clues that make it appear like that was the original intent. I could be completely wrong, but it's just that's what I get from this. And so, yeah, it's kind of the other thing is when you get you, we've all, we have already had a it was small, but we have already had an area that was just carpet and walls. We have already had that, so coming back to another one so early on, and it, I do worry that it puts people off before they get to the 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 theater and the lazy river, which are legit amazing levels because uh, this um you'd be forgiven for thinking that this was the same as all the other backrooms games out there right this is effectively wandering around here kind of lost this is effectively the complex fan footage which is a good game don't get me wrong but animiapolis is more special ah come on so I don't know if this is procedurally generated. I just remember, and each time I played it, I've had to go down a kind of a slope or a ramp. I need to grab me something else here. If this goes on for ages. I'm going to cut it out. Yeah, that's a different part. I changed the default controls because the right trigger was run and the left trigger was zoom. I found that a little weird. Um, so I've got the left trigger set to run. I'm mostly running because uh, the Lazy River was cool to walk around and, and the theater too. But yeah, some of these areas is just like, yeah, okay, I've, I've seen the room now. There was a GameSpot video about liminal spaces in games. Aha! Here we are. I want some more tickets. No, that's not tickets. That's a bin. Um, there was a GameSpot video about uh, liminal spaces in games, and it mentioned Animiapolis, and it, the fact that there was some... There's, there's like a shadow figure later in the game. You'll see, but, uh, you know, the guy said about how he was really disappointed when that showed up and when it implied that you weren't alone. And I think he's completely wrong about that because, again, you look at the complex fan footage, which is the one that does it, uh, the one that basically is is just liminal spaces, nothing else. If it went on any longer than this sort of 20 minutes or so that game takes, that concept only lasts a certain amount of time and eventually you have to bring in some other sort of uh, challenges. Not challenges as in uh, the game being hard, but, you know, like either scares or thrills or just something to experience. Okay, so you come out in these... Elevators up here, and the idea is to Please get to the end. To Please wait for four elevators to 
you have to get the other elevators to come up, which to do so, you need to go into the levels to do the exit elevators. So collecting the tickets doesn't actually get you to the end of the game. It just opens the elevators, right? Okay, so I now have, let me find out how many tickets I have. Is the button back on there now? Yeah, good. So this is kind of where, okay, you need 20 for the country club. Uh, I did see, it's not, for some reason, it's not telling me how many tickets I have now, so I don't get to see until I collect some, and that can be, uh, I think maybe it tells you when there aren't enough. Oh, here we go, some more. Let's have a look. I have 110. Simply just when you pause, it should show you tickets on the pause screen or something, but. Okay, interestingly, so now I've only done that one stage and I already have enough to go into the to the lazy river, which is great. Um, but here's the thing, right? The thing about it, and I, the implied order here is that, you know, there's a free one. So go there first. There's one that only costs 10 tickets, 20 tickets even. So go there next. Then there's one that costs 40, I think, which is the theater. And then go there after that. And then finally, the one that costs the most. So that implies that you know we have level one not including the intro level of course which was which was good but this level one is just that empty nothing list that we just went in then level two would be the country club which is just a mini golf course which is entirely optional i just spent ages in there just trying to do every hole thinking that's what you needed to do to get tickets but no that the golf does nothing to progress the game it's optional and it's infinite so by the time I got back here and found those 20 tickets there, after no tickets in there, only five in here, I was just really burned out. And there's nothing much here in the country. Golf. The mini golf is cool and all. Um, I'll have a quick go in there and show you. <laughs> but it, I think that as a result, these two levels that have been picked to be essentially the first, although now you, there's enough tickets that you can kind of choose your own order, the price of each one implies this is the order you do them in and it really means that it gets off to such a slow start like and i know this is not a fast game but just the start it really it put me off and i'm sure it put other people off because the, uh, these two levels are very different to the the demo it's cool i mean this is look at this space this looks great and again it's just weirdly lonely and empty um, and again, little tickets learner, but all you have to do in this, this level, actually, to progress the game, you have to, now, either this entrance and that door back there, they both lead to the same thing. They both get you into the golf course, which is, which is fun. So there's a holds there and there's exit there, right? And after each golf course, there's an exit. Uh, all you actually have to do to progress the game is go through the exit. And when you return back here, there's the exit elevator. So this is all you have to do in this level. But there's the optional infinite golf course. Okay, so now that one's become the exit. Interestingly, whichever one you take first becomes the golf course and the other one becomes the exit. That's kind of fun. Um, or something to that effect. Yeah, there we go. See, hole one. Now, so this is... ah. Seems to be something weird that happens at the balls despawn if you have been to that hole already. But this is another thing. Okay, we've got a little mouse hole there so we can skip around to here. It's another criticism, I'm afraid. This is the problem with making a video on this game because it's very... The problems are very front-loaded. All the good stuff is in the second half. You know, but to play, we have to look down at the ball and... So, you know, you get closer to the ball, the hit gets harder, you get further away and so... I can see where this idea came from. But the problem being, I can't look where I'm aiming. So you have to look up, remember, so I can't like aim for that hole. I have to kind of look up, remember it's there and guess. Let's guess. Whoop, wrong button. <laughs> yeah, miles off. So I, again, I was on here for ages and I was like, when can I get to the cool, scary stuff? When can I get to the lazy river and stuff like that when I was on the stream? And I was just instead hitting this all around. I'm not going to go in. I'm going to put it over here. Because I thought, you know, 
how do I get tickets? This is the only way to get them. I'm not going to do it. But now just go to the exit, the exit elevator appears and you go back up. But again, I was like, I had like 10 tickets and all the other entrances cost more. Or however many I had to get in here, you know. Whoa, it's maddening, isn't it? Whoa. Crazy. There we go. Um, so having those two levels back to back, uh, I just I think the golf course should have been later. It, it could have been a palate cleanser after some of the really cool and creepy stuff, not early on. As I say, you can now tackle the game in your chosen order, which is great. But the the numbers of tickets required is still a heavy implication. Do them in this order, please, player, for you know new players. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to say that I've got those two parts out of the way because the real Myopolis starts here. Now I'm not saying those two levels are bad at all. I'm just saying they're a really bad start and a really bad um bad impression of what this game is. Okay. So uh, something interesting, I don't know if maybe there's that I've missed some tickets or what, but what generally the elevators, the doors close when you've done that level and you can push the button to replay that level, okay? But for some reason, it doesn't happen with the conference center, the first level. Maybe it's because it's free and you don't need tickets for it or what, but it doesn't close for some reason. Anyway, country club's done. And here's... So... Again, the ticket order implies that I should go to the theater first and then to the tropical resort. But I'm going here now because I've got enough tickets. I think I have. No, no, I haven't because I used five. I used, sorry, 20 to get into the golf course. Right, so I'm going to go to the theater now anyway then. Um, but here's where it gets good. Okay, so yeah, it shows you your, how many tickets you do have when, when you don't have enough or when you collect some. I honestly think that hitting the pause menu, you should just have a little thing saying how many tickets are in the corner, just so you can check. Because it's easy to forget, especially when you've spent some and it doesn't tell you how many. It doesn't show the tickets disappearing or show you that you've got this many now. So that's why I thought I had over 100 when I didn't. Oh, look at this. The, just the choice of colors here and the, oh, everything about it is like, oh. Makes me want to go and watch a movie. So in my hometown, we have this. Our cinema is a weird sort of space, and I often go there at night and watch something that clearly other people aren't watching because it's dead there. But we have, unlike this, we have bright, uh, bright yellow walls with some blue. It's really weird. It doesn't have that cool, uh, dark and neon-y aesthetic a lot of cinemas do. It's, um, it, 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 but it's it does have a liminal space kind of feel to it. But because it's all yellow and blue, I was like, oh, it's it's a Minions cinema. What's that going on up there? I see something flickering up. Oh, that is the end of this shape, I think. Ah, interesting. Anyway, check out the uh, the reflections in here as well. That is, I believe it's using the cube map from a reflection probe, but the normals, which is showing which direction a part of a surface is facing and therefore what light should and shouldn't hit it, are all sort of wrinkled up, giving that that wrinkled look of the acetate or plastic or whatever they have on the outside of these posters and I also love just entering a semi art deco semi sort of early 90s looking cinema but there's nothing on all the posters are gone you know it's not even like old posters of what was on before it got abandoned or whatever no it's like it's just been made it's just been built but not used uh, so, or something but if it is abandoned, then after everybody left, somebody did a really good cleaning job. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing as well towards my theory. Oh, floating tickets. Towards my theory of um, this game originally being intended to be linear. Uh, is that, so we've arrived in the theater. And like, oh, cool, theater level. Now, both hallways to the actual screens are blocked off. 
And what you have to do is, and this is a mechanic of any Minneapolis and was in the demo as well. Unfortunately, it wasn't in those two first two levels. Once again, it's uh, again, just a bad start, but um, yeah, effectively climbing onto areas where, you know, to find your uh, secret way out. And again, if you're lost in an underground place, you're like, I need to find a way out. Uh, and you would try anything. You would, you know, climb up on there and go into weird places. And that's cool. But interestingly, we've just started the theater. I just went down the elevator that said theater. I've just started the theater level and I've seen the entrance to a theater. I've gone out and back and I'm in a mall. Now, obviously this is because the, you know, the entrance was blocked. So we take a little detour back around, but it's interesting that this mall exists in a place where everywhere is supposed to be accessed via elevators, right? You know, I think, see, you'll see later that the, um, the lazy river stage, uh, after that, there's an, you go out, you exit it and there's an entrance behind you that says pool and spa. And there's a similar sort of mall court area to this. And my theory is that originally we're going to go through all of the, all of that cool pool, pool and spa stuff. You were going to exit that, and I think this was going to be the next area. You were just going to go through a mall for a while, then into the theater, and then you know onwards from there. I think that was that. that that's my theory. <laughs> this is great. I love this. <laughs> that's a depressed ass ride. Creepy. Look how good the uh, reflection looks on here as well. Just really brings the surfaces to life. There's some of the glitches in reflection. Where you can see what you can see our cube map reflection there, and then when I move to the side, the screen space reflection takes over. That's kind of weird looking. It does the job, and you can also see some of the weird sort of it's almost like a spiky effect that goes on at the edges of the screen space reflection sometimes. Kind of funky, but yeah, you know it does the job. Um, Apparently the dev has had people asking for ray tracing, but he's like, well, I don't, I don't have the hardware for that. Good music. See the gumballs. Let's see if there's any tickets around here as well. So an interesting thing as well, you get these, you know, five tickets here and there and everywhere to encourage exploration. I get it. But the strange thing is it, it will just randomly also give you 50 or even 100 tickets in some of these later levels where you don't really need any anymore. Mannequins are always creepy and weird. Is like a minimal mannequin. There's another one in there. Um, silly little physics things. These are fun too. You can just make all the gumballs fall out. It's nice that the, you don't have to put any money in, and the gumballs you get a shitload of them. It's a good deal. <laughs> Maybe a bit, you know, put a ticket in, collect a gumball, use it for a puzzle later. <laughs> so in the demo, when you first see a gumball machine, there's a little thing that pops up that you can so you can get the uh, protagonist to say something about it. And he says, I used to love gumballs. And it's like, I realize it's supposed to be, I loved them when I was a kid, you know, but it kind of comes across as I used to love gumballs until the incident. <laughs> you know? But that line's gone. So maybe, maybe the dev agreed that it was a weird line. Through here. Whoop. Now remember, right? Yeah, there's... 50 tickets so it's interesting that they'll just throw 50 tickets at you what's the point in searching if the tickets were to encourage exploration then what's the point in all the little five tickets dotted around when you can just get 50 on the main path you know i, th I find that the, just the tickets are not this it's a lot better now but they weren't very well uh, distributed um after the very first update on day two i think it was a day two patch it made it so that that conference area had way more tickets in it to find, which really does help actually, because it does prevent you getting stuck. Let me have some coffee. It does prevent you getting stuck the way uh, and confused the way I was. And I was really gutted because I loved the demo so much. Um, but yeah, that is certainly has fixed the, that little problem. Show you something interesting here. When I'm looking through this window, there are, refle there are reflections in the window to show that it's glass and not just nothing. But you see how the gumball dispensers, the, 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 the tops are floating there, the glass part is gone, and the door there is gone as well. When I look through here, I can see it. I can see them there, but they're gone. 
And this is because an interesting thing about how the way 3D games are rendered. I said earlier before that it's only aware of what is on screen because if it had to render and figure out everything else, it would go crazy. That's in a way, that's sort of what ray tracing does. You know, it actually bounces around the light and finds what it's supposed to reflect and it becomes more aware of what's, what is not on screen. Uh, but we also do what's called render passes, which is you draw this picture, you draw one picture, and then you draw some new ones on top of it, like new layers afterwards. Because if you think about it, if I only draw what's on screen, there are some things that I need to know first. For example, if I want to draw glass that's transparent, that's translucent, I need to know what's behind that glass to make it translucent, right? Because you need to be able to see through it. So there is, tends to be generally two to three render passes. Usually there's two in, in a base game, which is oh, the opaque, uh, the opaque pass and the transparent pass. So anything that's transparent is drawn after everything else. That's why games often try to avoid as much transparency as possible because it doubles the number of things they have to draw, right? Or doubles the number of render passes as they call it. So what's happening here is that the glass, so everything, all the opaque stuff has been drawn, but the glass of those gumballs and the glass of this window and this, being that this has got gaps in it, this is technically transparent as well. So for some reason this one, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but um, when it's transparent stuff has not been drawn yet. So when it does draw it, it only draws the one that's closest because why would it draw stuff that's behind stuff, you know? So you'll find that transparent stuff disappears behind other transparent stuff unless you do some like sort of workarounds for it. Uh, and that's interesting. Um, often you don't really notice, but it's uh, it does become an issue occasionally in this game, and particularly here because Seeing that door is important right now because oh you come all the way around here and then we access the where have these all gone by the way you know we did a bunch of well we did one or two of these early on in the game maybe even just one I think it was just the one but the hot wiring for those first two levels you don't do any of it but then suddenly you've gone from doing one to like a really big more confusing maze like one. Okay, so if you look, that door is also opening. Because you can't see it through the glass, at first you're like, what happened? What's changed? Uh, you do usually spot it if you're going through this door, but that's an interesting one. Um, generally, the answer to stuff like that is to uh, either do something else for your glass effect, or you add an extra render pass for certain things like water, glass, etc. So you actually have three render passes. Um, which is obviously, it can affect performance, but I do believe that's something that he does later on in the Lazy River um, for the water. Uh, anything else in here? I'm trying to remember the way around now. But yeah, let's go through these empty rooms. I keep thinking there's a gap in the ceiling, but it's the glass on the lights reflecting. That's interesting. Of course, because the lights are switched off, they would reflect. Cool little, uh, not jump scare per se, but a little surprise. All right, and we are still in the mall. So if you think about it, considering this is the theatre level, there's a lot of mall here. I think that it was going to be, the mall itself was going to be a level. And it was going to be the area between the Lazy River and the theatre. I've got even more evidence to back that up as well. I'll show you in a minute. Love these 90s carpets. Look over here, we've got a popcorn stand. But no popcorn, nobody to buy anything. Not even seats or tables. It's this uh, weird sort of deadness. But What's fascinating is it has that dead mall look to it, except everything is clean, like it's just been cleaned up. The first I was like, is this like a little atrium before the, atrium is that the word? Before the theater, but no, there would not be a shoe shop in a theater. I used to love gumballs. Oh, tickets. Thank you. Okay, so let's find the, uh, 
And this is an interesting thing with both this level and the um, the uh, pool level, which I think both levels were, I'm assuming both levels were done before the pivot towards the hub world because, and this is, this is a big thing that backs up my theory, which is that that we went, we were in the theater entrance, you know, via the elevator, which is the way in this world, in this in Indianapolis, that you spend tickets to get in the elevator to go to that place. And yet, here's another entrance to the theater from the mall, which I arrived in because I, because I, uh, cl I clambered up and out the back. Um, so, if there are these, if there are these ex entrances, because there's one in the pool as well, from the mall. Whether you're going through, you know, leaving via them or going in via them. What is this mall area? Like, there's no way to get here. If you access everywhere via elevators, right? Where's this? And, well, I do think that backs up my theory that it was changed. That it was originally just going to be a linear thing without a hub world. It also kind of adds to the mystery of the game, right? So... Like, what is this? What was this going to be? Or what was this if it was once something? That's, I find that really interesting. Anyway, I've got to find that popcorn uh, cart. There it is. There's another funny thing here, because I'll tell you in a moment. I'm just got to grab this popcorn cart and drag it up with me. Interesting repeating sound effect. Kind of sounds like a train on tracks. A Nemoopolis Mall grand opening. Yeah. Did I let go? Oh, it got it snagged. So grand opening. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's not a place that was abandoned. It's a place that hasn't opened yet. That you have found. That's really interesting. Okay, here's a cool thing. I'm going to just drop this. Right? Yeah. So this mannequin here, it moves. Of course the mannequin moves. Can't not move a mannequin, right? If you're making a horror. But it's kind of cool. But I thought... So, see, here's the thing, right? I have to be pointing at it to let go for some reason. So you can actually stand on the mannequin's head. So I thought... Being that the mannequin moves, and he says, I need something to stand on to get over there. I thought that you had to get this mannequin to reappear behind you at the entrance and step on the mannequin's head. And I thought, that's genius! Uh, yeah, and unfortunately it was not genius. It was, um, you just drag a thing. That's fine, this isn't a puzzle game. But, still. Oh. Dropped it. of this carpet. Look at that. You still get them in some places, but I miss 90s carpets, man. These patterns existed on carpets. Crazy patterns on carpets. You still get them on the seats on buses and trains, right? It's because, it's purely because they hide stains better. Because in a public place like that, there's no way you're gonna, the carpet's gonna stay clean. Not even after one day of being open, you know. But stains are much less obvious when a carpet is crazy like this. It you know it diverts your eye away from the them. And so, not only were they fun nineties aesthetic, they were uh, they have application. But yeah, if that was the mannequin thing, I suppose a lot of people would have got stuck. But hey, loads of people got stuck on this game anyway because of the crazy mazes. But that would have been so cool. Um, I love this. Look at that. Just the neon strip lights making swirly patterns reflected in the, what, the glass or the metal, whatever it is. It's awesome. Um, empty. So, as well, like, did you buy the ticket? Were you supposed to buy tickets here for the cinema or the other end? I don't know. It's, it's like it's like some kind of big resort. And the Hub World does add to that. It does make it feel like it's like a, a sort of a resort. But, yeah, um... I feel like that would have been the entrance to the theatre, the actual entrance, after a one linear mall section, after the end of the... 
I could be completely wrong, but that's what I, that's the impression I get. I appreciate that it says locked before you try the door. That saves you a lot of, a lot of trouble. This is Silent Hill, this ain't, right? That was one of the biggest problems in the Silent Hill games up until like, well, up until like four, you would just go through checking so many doors. And this is, so I love this, right? Check this out. This is just one of these empty sort of back rooms here. But, okay, yep, go in here, get some tickets. Of course, the tickets, I do think the tickets make sense because otherwise there's no reason to go into some of these rooms. Uh, but, yeah, sure, I don't know how well you can hear this, but there's a sound here, just a weird sound if you stand here. And I've seen some people play it and they go, oh, what is that, what is that? Now, I immediately thought there's a screen next to it and there's a weird movie playing. And that's what it is. And, like, you know, I always think about... Again, a lot of this Animoya thing or the liminal space thing, it's about finding some decaying memory in your brain that you haven't committed to long-term memory, but it's there. Finding it and just kind of pulling it out and messing with it. That's kind of what these liminal space things do. It's why even though these are cozy and uh, tranquil spaces, they create such a feeling of unease. And so it often becomes, you know, it's often a horror game or horror experience. Um, you know, the back room's been such a scary, creepy pasta and stuff now. And that, for some reason, just how often, you know, you're in the uh, cinema to watch a film and you go to use the bathroom and you can hear a different film from the screen next door. Usually it's just the baseline for it or whatever, but you're like, what the hell is that? What, what film is that? You know, I find that, that for some reason evoked that feeling in me. More tickets. Yeah, I love as well. Just the weird films look. Now, I don't know if this is hinting at the lore. If this is because this game's story isn't revealed, it's just says chapter one. I don't know if they'll ever re reveal what the full story is, but uh, for greater efficiency and greater convenience. So, saying lines like that from some old infomercial type thing, uh, but that weird sort of. E AI generated footage of just like, again, liminal spaces, but it was almost like they're being generated. And it's like, it was this place generated by artificial intelligence. Was this like created by, you know, almost, almost like Kane pixels version of the back rooms Were these created by some kind of intelligence or some kind of automation. But it definitely seems like this is, some kind of <laughs> this was some kind of idea and it's either gone wrong or there's something sinister behind it that was Kane Pixel's backrooms wasn't it the lore of that was that they found like some kind of either found or created some kind of infinite pocket dimension and were able to make it use they were trying to use it for space uh, like you know because there was like a um, a, a, a space crisis there wasn't enough real estate and so they had this like infinite thing where the idea was you'd be able to purchase by space but then they find you know and it like generates like you know buildings or whatever and and it yeah there's that sound again I love it I love that you can hear the weird film before you see it Here it is. <laughs> Fantastic. So, looking at this and looking at, you know, these crazy spaces, this weird sort of almost backrooms generated sort of thing, it, um, in a way, it, I understand why those two sort of infinite but empty stages were put at the start because in a way, these the really cool stages like, oh, don't blow your load first, but also now we're starting to get hints as to why there are these weird, empty, infinite spaces. How many tickets have I got now? Yeah, more than 11E, look, 255. I'd like to see some other use for the tickets. Things like, you know, you get the gumballs out or you turn that ride on, you could just spend a ticket doing so if there's, you know, if you've got more than enough to get around or I don't know. I also feel like maybe it would have been like, oh, you know, you spend a ticket to open this door to get into the screen and things. I'm not sure. But 
There's also, you know, the electrical panels, those seem to have been kind of abandoned. And it also adds to my theory that this was supposed to be after the Lazy River stage because the it had the mo more complex, um, the, the electrical panel that I did there. It was like a big maze. It was, it was relatively simple to solve, but it was much more complex than the previous ones. But in the, the family resort, the Lazy River, it goes back to having a simple one again, as if it's like a reverse difficulty curve or a warped difficulty curve. This makes me think these red seats, it makes me think of the IMAX. That's not an, I don't know if it's supposed to be an IMAX size screen or not, but this seating really makes me think of IMAX. That silly world. And no tickets here. So this is cool, isn't it? Go into the screen and it's a weird like void with that sound again. And there's the exit elevator. So, wasn't quite up there with the Lazy River, but that's a really, really cool level. Um, only one thing resembling a scare, which was the, the 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 kids' little bus thing, bus thing, little van thing activating. That's good coffee. Now we're into the real jewel in the crown now, onto the family resort. So yeah, I can, in theory, I can understand why the Lazy River was kept till till last. Well, not last last, but out of the available levels here, kept till last. And it was so, so, so good uh, in the demo. And I can see that the, the developer wouldn't want to blow their load too early, so to speak, you know, and it's true because pools are such a cool liminal space. They're probably the coolest, right? There's the back rooms is interesting, but then all of those backrooms games, the backrooms, um, the the, um, the complex fan footage, etc. They always get more interesting when you get to the pool rooms level, don't they? So if you're open with the pool, I guess, where do you go from there? Because you tend to go to less interesting places. But um, yeah, the theater there kind of remind me of the theater area in Silent Hill Shattered Memories, which is a way underrated game. But um, and there was a really cool bit in that where you'd just be in the cinema and then suddenly just a, a sad face, your daughter's face appears on the screen looking really distraught, but just that face coming out of nowhere, it really, it really gets you. I love these giant, great big uh, light things here. Um, so this is, interestingly, this glass doesn't have any reflections or any texture on it. My theory is, I've got a lot of these theories, huh? My theory is this glass isn't reflective because there's the translucent water behind it and that's whole transparency issue that we saw in the um, in the mall before the theater there. I think that the dev has got this water here and gone, ah, um, well, there is a reflection though. I can see the reflection there. So maybe it is a second render pass, but it's just maybe the reflection is not uh, strong enough that, because I, I walked in here, I was like, why can't I get there? Not realizing that this was glass. Um, Okay, so what we have to do here, it's hot wires, but see how we've gone back to simplistic hot wiring again. Like this is much less, I mean, it's not any easier, but it's, you don't look at it and go, oh shit, like you did the other one. Uh, I feel like this seems like because it would, early, would have been earlier in the game. <laughs> they didn't think this design through, did they? Interesting thing where I saw this land and I was like, I didn't test it, but I was like, what happens if I run to where it's going to land and stand where it's going to fall on me? And uh, this is just, you know, decade of d doing game design. I was like, that'll make me clip through the floor and that'll break the game. And uh, potentially, so unless these thought, you know, unless it like kills you, fades out and puts you back to the start or something like that. But yeah, I found on the Steam forum for it, there was some people that said, yeah, this landed on me and I fell through. It's the little things that like, that's why you do bug testing, you know, and um, this dev has been very secretive with this game and has, uh, and it, you know, I can totally understand that. Like, doesn't want to uh, work with uh, publishers and the like, uh, just wants, and, and I understand that. How those are kind of twirling to show that they're hanging there. Just bad design, man. <laughs> Not bad game design bad uh, room designed by the people that created Animoiapolis, the place. Um, 
But yeah, it's just, you look at those things it's, and you start to predict them when you've when you've had it happen a lot throughout your work. Ah, here we are. Right. I remember when I was first playing through the uh, full game because this is the part that we all know from the demo. And it's like, I just went, finally! <laughs> so this is this beautiful, uh, the lazy river, this incredible linear space. Just some of the, just an absolute masterpiece of liminal space design. Uh, we got the, so here's another thing. And I think this backs up my theory too. See, he's just said, this place makes me uncomfortable. After all the places he's just been in, this is the one that makes him uncomfortable. Huh? But when this was the first part of the game, as it was in the demo, it made sense to say things like that. And the other thing is, have you noticed the whole mechanic of the Y, the prompt come out pressing Y to have uh, the character react and, and make comments on what's on screen? It was in the very intro, and then it was gone until we've reached this level, which was in the demo. So it's almost as if that whole thing had just got forgotten. And even more so, he often, he says quite a few things in this stage, which he said in the demo, which imply that he's only just found himself in Animoiapolis. Because this is, compared to those maddening office mazes and things, this is quite, um, quite chill, right? Quite, uh, mundane. So it's weird that he's like, oh, this place makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, let's grab these tickets over here. You know, I still like finding the tickets. You go, ooh. So I know that people say that the tickets, uh, 165, where did all the others go? Or did I, oh, I spent 100 to get in here, right? Yes, of course. Um, but the, yeah, the, the, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yes, yeah, so people saying the tickets. I don't think the tickets themselves ruined it. It was just how they were distributed. And it's a lot, lot better now that he's redistributed them. Um, uh, and you know what? The most requested feature that they've and, and has been added is sliding on the slides. Because you used to just walk down them. Go on, get down there. Get down there. And these things follow the physics as well, which is cool. Go on, get down there. But yeah, and so you hold the crouch button and woohoo! I'm assuming this is achieved with splines, like a sort of curves thing. But it, it works. It works really well because uh, I was, I remember I was looking at people saying, "Oh, can you use the slides?" And I was like, "How would I even make that work if it was me? Like, how would I? Like, I I actually was like, I have no idea. The only thing I could think would be to use a spline curve and have you follow it." Ah, oh, it's so good to be in this part because this level has the feeling, captures it so well of just being like, it's a really cool place, like where it would be a lot of fun to be, but it's also really weirdly uncomfortable. It's just the lighting's just a little bit too dim and it's empty. There's nobody here. And oh, it's great. And the, the whole thing of painting clouds onto walls, right? Painting a wall like a sky, it never, works does it but a lot of places do it but it always makes you feel weirdly uncomfortable it's like i'm like i'm outside but it's oppressive as hell because i'm not outside here's the thing that i i don't i don't like to be that guy that says oh i hope they patch this out but here's the thing i really hope gets patched because this wasn't in the demo but you can't hear it so much now but if i try and run in the water you can hear the dry footstep sounds still and it really, for some reason, that really breaks my immersion. I don't feel like I'm in the water. Like completely breaks the immersion of that for me. So I don't, I either walk along the side or I don't run in the water. Other thing I noticed as well, if you crouch and uncrouch, you get the water, the sound of you coming out of the water. Um, I can, I've got theories as to why that, the way that happens. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's to do with the tr uh, either a trigger that you enter to go in the water or to do with your position on the screen uh, in the in the world and stuff. I'll show you a thing with these plants in a minute, but first, oh, this is so cool. So in the demo, you entered the lazy river here and it became an infinite 
maze. Well, not infinite, but a long and confusing maze where rooms repeated and so on. And you think, am I lost? What the hell is going on? Until you eventually find a way out. Uh, but this version has done a really cool thing where it's at first you go, oh, you come up here and it's, oh, there isn't an exit. He said, maybe there's an exit in the lazy river. Oh, turns out there isn't. Oh, well, um, there's a thing here. Oh, well, I guess I will go back. And then when you go back, Like, wait a minute. I'm sure it wasn't this long before. And you can't get back. It's changed. It's gone. You've been bloober teamed. You've been layers of feared. Awesome. Really, 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 really cool. That's like, okay, now there's something definitely very wrong, right? Um, okay, there's a fun thing I was going to show you. Speaking of transparency. And this really threw me off at first. So I was like... How, why does that happen, right? Because I, like, I, I see, that, you know, so obviously, the thing is, all the details on these leaves, they, it's, to model those details would be awkward. So what you tend to have is that this leaf, this front here is probably just a big kind of circular shape. And the texture I painted onto it has holes in it for transparency. So it's using transparency to draw it and also the water, right? And I was like, but still, that doesn't make sense because it's in front of the water. So when drawing the water, it would, you know, it would cut out parts where there's something in front of it, like it does the rocks here, because it's, that's the op the opacity. But uh, not the opacity. That's you know, because it's the 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 ordering, the um, the Z buffer or Z buffer. The I think what's happening here is that a this is using a transparency. Uh, to get the holes in the leaves. But B, there's also the water here is being drawn on a separate render pass after the transparency. And I think what's happening is that the water is using the opaque texture, which is generated from the first render pass. And it's, it's, it's basically what you see on the screen, but, but it's kind of stored as a texture that you can reference when drawing other things. And I think to get to be able to draw what's under the water and then make it wibbly wobbly like that, I think it's using the opaque texture to do that but because it's drawing the water after the transparency the trans the, the opaque texture doesn't know that there's a transparent thing in front of it either so it's just drawing it over it that's what I, i'm this is my guess as to what's happening easiest fix would be uh to not have this transparency use the transparency because you can have a similar effect to this where there's cutouts and leaves by using what's called an alpha uh, alpha clip threshold which just means basically if it's less than a certain amount of translucency, then just cut it out. Uh, it's still, it's, and it's still an opaque object, I, I think. I've not done much of that, but I think that's how that works. Uh, and I believe using alpha cutoff would have kept, had this as an opaque object and it would have still shown. Or we just render the transparencies after the water as a separate render pass, but then we'd have trouble when you, parts like when you're looking through glass at the water. Um, fascinating. Now, this whole Lazy River section has been considerably beefed up since the demo. It was There was a handful of rooms that... And this is randomly, not procedurally generated as such, but it, there's a bunch of different rooms that kind of tile, and, and it randomizes where which one appears next. But since the demo, they, he's made a whole lot more rooms, and it's really cool. Um, I think that it goes on a little too long. Um, I'm not actually sure if there is an actual set length or not because I've had times in the procedurally generated areas and some of them where it's taken me hours and uh, not hours but a very long time and other times when I've just ended up finding the exit immediately so you know I feel like there should be like a minimum or a maximum Wee! I'm so glad that you can do that and we've got a helter skelter slide and everything now I think I came in this way yeah another interesting thing if I I don't know if I can make it work here. No, because I think it's already chosen the room that appears there. But sometimes, if you look really carefully, you can see a gap and then the room appearing. And sometimes you can see like a slight seam between where the rooms connect. So they are, I think, I think, I'm think assuming what it's doing is they're prefabricated, they're prefabs the rooms, which are then generated as you go. Or, you know, shuffled around. And I think the way these work, these mazes work, is that it will just spawn random rooms 
for a certain amount of time until it just lets you move on. It's like eventually it just lets up and goes, yeah, I don't know if you can see that in my recording, but there's a seam right there where the rooms connect. Um, I actually don't think there's much of a solution you can do to that other than make them overlap slightly, but that might cause what's called uh, Z fighting, where you get like a flicker between two things. So that the, the seam is probably actually a better option than um, checking the time. Yeah. These rooms are so cool. It absolutely nails that whole liminal space aesthetic because it's got that thing of you kind of really want to be there. Like, I want to be here in the Lazy River, but also, oh, it makes you feel really just uncomfortable and weird. So it's a really good setting for a really good kind of background for a horror. Now, you might also notice I keep saying horror, but there's been very little actual horror, if any, so far. And that was one of my disappointments of the full game versus the demo. Because the demo does have some horror, but it is, you know, it's been relegated to only this level in the full game. And again, maybe that's why there's the implied order and this is to be the last one. A, so it's not to blow load early, but B, to, you know, have it so that the horror-ish stuff is the climax of the game. But I personally, there's been a lot of people, a lot of the feedback on this. There's the GameSpot video which said that once there was, you know, somebody with you, then it ruined it. Well, not ruined it, but, you know, the guy who just didn't like that. And there's loads of people. Every, any of these Liminal Space games, there will be people on Reddit, on Steam, everywhere going, Oh, is there going to be monsters? I don't want to be scared. I want to be relaxed. And it's like, this, don't play horror games then? I don't know, but um, like, don't get me wrong. If there was a Five Nights at Freddy's style thing that jumped and went blah, 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 blah in your face, that would ruin this game completely. But the horror that it had was so well done and so just the right level of subtlety versus threat. Versus, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, and it has been changed and slightly toned down. But you probably see what I mean when I say that this lazy river has gone on for maybe a little too long. I think. It's a really hard thing to nail because, you know, you want it to be just long enough that you go, what's going on? That you start to feel uncomfortable and lost. Have I done something wrong? Is there a puzzle I'm supposed to do? Am I supposed to, you know, and you get confused and, and, and lost and stuff and that gets you uncomfortable. And just around the point, you know, ideally just around that point where you're starting to get confused, you, you'd hit the exit or, you know, just when you... What you're just uncomfortable enough to be like, oh god, is something is horribly wrong, but not to quit yet. And here we are. There's the uh, the uh, the last room of it. But I feel like maybe the problem is that length. There is no there's no objective. You can't quantify that because everybody has a different level of patience, right? I think last time I checked, this slide was broken. I worked that time. There have been times where I try to go down it and I just go completely in the wrong direction. Like, a, yeah, that worked that time. Sometimes you just fly off to one side or whatever. Okay, I think it's going to get interesting here because although there's extra parts, it's quite different to the... Well, those extra parts, it's quite similar to what the demo was. But this threw me off because I was like, whoa, where's this? Is this another new place? But no, there was the changing rooms were here and this was the end of this level because it was an ascent from there. But now... This level, interestingly, has been completely reversed. So it actually has mostly the same layout as it had before, but it's just backwards. So you enter where you left in the demo. And that's fascinating. And I can see why. And, and there's been some really interesting, actually surprisingly good level design decisions have been made in this process. Uh, others less so. But um, for one thing, you start on the slide because originally you had to climb up this slide and look, it's a video game, not real life, but it used to always bug me. It's like, have you ever tried to climb up a slide, even just a small one? It's impossible. <laughs> you just slip and slip and slip. Uh, but um, it's interesting because you come in here and say, oh, nice pool. Because this was like just a little bit at the end of a weird level. But now what, now you enter via it, it's kind of cool and you notice it somehow. Um, and it's like, this is starting to get a little weird, right? Like, looks a little odd. And you run around like, where the hell am I supposed to go? Where am I supposed to go? Until you realize 
you get on here and go up. Now, at first I was baffled as to the decision to, I was baffled about the decision to reverse this. I was like, why would you, why would you do that? Like, what, what, so that the slide is at the start because the rest of it doesn't work as a linear level anymore. You look down and you can see, you can actually, if you jump down here, you can skip forward as well. There's some tickets like, oh, I want to get those. Do I jump in that water? I don't know. But I'm going to go all the way to the top just because I know stuff is up there. But I, I, after the fact, looking back at it, I understand this decision. Because remember I said, you got, there was the dude. There he was. I call him the dude. And there was this, so if you look at the first two levels and partially the theater level, a major, major part of this game's idea now, its conceit is where do I go? How do I get out of here? I climb up the railings. I, I climb on somewhere where I'm not supposed to be. You know, it's, you're going around the wrong way, right? And there's a lot of going the wrong way. Whereas this level in the demo was uphill, very linear. Now, similarly, we've climbed up a slide. Okay, to be fair, you did have to go down. You had to climb down that slide before instead of up the outside of it. But it's, you know, the level itself was, there was some locked doors. You you did some of those electrical panels to open them and then you go through them. Whereas now it's a, it's much more maze like, like the other levels. So it does actually bring it more into a Nemoiapolis's general idea. Look at these water shaders. Beautiful. I remember when I did the demo, I won't bore you with it, but check out the video of when I did the demo and I just kind of go up to these water shaders. I believe this is using a, a Voronoi pattern, which is basically randomly placed dots that move around. And for each individual pixel, you use its distance from the nearest dot as like a thing. So originally, yeah, they, there were these holes in the floor uh, in these areas, which there wasn't much point in, but you, you know, it was cool to see. And you'd be in early areas, you could look up and see up into here, which was kind of cool. But, you know, you could fall in the holes and go all the way back and be like, oh man, I've got to climb all the way back up again. But interestingly, in reversing level, I'm disappointed the dude used to appear here and it was really cool, but he's gone. Uh, but again, there's more reasons to go into these random rooms now if you're looking for tickets. Though you're not looking for tickets because there's no more levels, but still, uh, you get the point. It's, an explore it's more about exploration than it is about getting from A to B now, which is cool. Oh, there's some, there's some tickets up on there. Yeah, yeah, come on. Ah, come on, got it. I was surprised that there never seems to be any tickets in all these things that you can open. Um, this texture has been redone as well. Uh, but so here's where it's interesting, because I remember coming down here and thinking, well, you can just jump straight into this room because there was just, but they put a window here or there. He's put a window here. Yeah, I wonder if the double, the extra render pass is because you can see through the glass here, so into the water. That's done after the, oh, but this is a different level, isn't it? Um, yeah, this room was a really, really good room and just the way it looks, and it rem it's reminiscent of some of those liminal space renders, the confusing pool ones. But here's something I really like, though unfortunately you can skip this by accident if you don't go all the way up that slide like I did. But you're looking here and oh man, that is a significant looking room. I need to get in there. And so you like you go around and nothing about these pools makes any sense. Nothing about this game makes any sense, dude. Where you been? Another interesting, um, the doors open towards you now, uh, which is a little bit weird, but that's because the level was reversed. Oh, tickets. I don't know why, I still like collecting them when I see them, even though I don't need them. It would be really cool if there's either... Yeah, something's going on with this shader here. Not the shader, the material here, but... Um, it'd be really cool if there's like an like achievements for collecting X number of tickets or something you could do with them. But yeah, hang on. There's the dude. A lot of the sightings of the dude were gone in the uh, the release build, and they just he quickly put them back in again on the day two patch, which is nice. I do think that all the people saying, Oh, I don't want scares. I don't want... Where can, can I please play a Nemoiapolis but without being scared, please? I think a lot, a lot of the people that keep saying that, and it's everywhere. Like, you go to any of these liminal space games and everybody goes, Well, no... And 
they're scared, right? A lot of people are like they they they, it's, they don't want to be scared, but they they word it in a way that tries to, to try and sound smart. Where they go, it shouldn't rely on scares. It should be an atmosphere. It's not cheap scares. It's not cheap scares. There's nothing about the Enemyopolis demo was cheap. There were no cheap scares, right? The closest Enemyopolis gets to any cheap scare is that when the um, the little kids uh, ride things, which is on when you're in that room uh, before the theatre, but. And that's not even that's not a cheap scare. It's just it's it's something of a jump, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know. I, some, I think a lot of people go, "Oh, cheap jump scares." What they really mean is, I'm too scared to play it. Please make it. And so, as somebody who likes horror, and look, I again, I don't think this should have screaming faces popping out at you. I hate when they do that shit. Uh, it works sometimes. Um, it works at Five Nights at Freddy's, for example, as a fail state. But you look at stuff like The Backrooms 1998, I think it was called, where literally just out of nowhere, it would just make a glitch the screen out and go <laughs> really loud and, and, and for nothing, not earned, no reason for it, no... That sucks, yeah, but... There was nothing cheap about the scares in this, but people just like to say it because they're just scared. Anyway, I was talking about this really cool shit, right? So this door here is locked. Um, actually, in uh, they haven't spawned there for me this time, but... Oh, no, they have. Yeah, there's tickets in here. I remember in the demo seeing that I wanted something to be in there. Because there was nothing, but... Yeah, that door is locked now. The cool thing is, if you've gone this way and you haven't jumped down and uh, skipped all of this... Um, you wander around picking up tickets, but you see all of these important-looking rooms. Um, and I'll get to my point in a minute. You see, you know, through behind uh, glass, you see these cool-looking rooms. And you're like, how do I get there? And you sort of... And the puzzle is to look up and see these... So these holes in the ceiling that before were kind of called decoration, they are hints now. It's like, oh, there's that area where I was, right? And similarly, going back here, there used to be a sighting of the dude here, but I think it's just gone now. I saw a really cool one on, I think it was Manly Badass Hero playing this, and there was a bit where he was looking through a window, and the dude was just there, floating there, and I can't seem to find that or get that to appear. And again, you look, oh, a hole in the ceiling there as well. And so there's your hint to go back Now, it'd be cool if there was something that you, instead of just tickets, if there was something you needed to do there, so you had to go there first, or or whatever, I don't know. But there's your hint to go back, and then jump over, and down. I thought that was brilliant. Uh, again, it's very unfortunate that a lot of people would might just accidentally, you know, skip a bunch of cool stuff anyway. But that's really cool. And if you fall down here, you'll land in here with this guy, which is creepy. Uh, I think this might be, yeah, one of the first potential places that you can fall in. So I think you'll end up there if you skip forward. Oh, tickets. 50. How many have I got now? Nice. I think it was there where the dude was in um, Manny Badass Heroes playthrough. I think it was just floating there. It was really cool and creepy. But I wonder if that happens if you fall down here and you haven't been in that room yet. I wonder if he disappears when you've been in that room. I don't know, but uh, that's pretty cool. There used to be panels on here because you had to unlock the doors to progress. And when you attacked it in the other direction, there was a funny thing in, in on day one. The panels were gone, but like the trigger that you used to activate them wasn't. So you could actually access the panel. And the crazy thing was... Um, I'll show you the room that it was in. It's, it's a really quite amusing thing, but it locked a lot of people in the game, right? In fact, there was even a dialogue prompt that said, here's an access panel, I might be able to access it, and that was left in. So there was an access panel right here, uh, right there, and there was even a cable leading from it along here, and uh, I think the reversal of this level, I don't know if it was done quickly or last minute or what, but the cable was still there even leading to this door. And what used to happen was when you had to do this level the other way around, that would unlock this door. <laughs> but what happened, because the door is open, because you've opened it to go through it, if you access the 
panel, the invisible panel, or the, you know, the panel that was gone, but the trigger was still there, it would then lock that door. And so the whole thing I said about going back to jump down, you couldn't do it because you were locked out. It was just a, it was a quite a fun glitch, um, but you know, fixed within 24 hours. So got to hand it to you, fair play. Um, this must be some kind of water reservoir. Okay, that was pretty cool. So we saw the foreshadowing of the dude. There's another thing. Look, see, here's some cube maps that don't line up again. Now, these, I really wish that maybe they are just not quite right, but I really wish these were box projected because if that, see, when that reflection lines up, that looks really cool. Same for this room over here. Again, unfortunately, due to it being backwards, the uh, the dude, there was a dude sighting here, but it's not anymore. I feel like maybe when you see through that window, you should have seen him. Maybe. I also want to acknowledge that this game is made by one guy. And he's, he's not like me. He doesn't do, develop games as a career. He does this in his spare time. So any things like this, like glitches or things that seem rushed that I say when like, oh, why does he talk in this level that was in the demo, but none of the other levels have dialogue, et cetera, et cetera. This guy doesn't have that kind of time if he wants to release it within his lifetime, you know? So I understand. Um, if there are changes or patches, obviously, that would be amazing. But I'm not one of those guys that go, please fix it. I mean, okay, I did when there were those, you know, when it was really broken on day one, but, you know, I'm not one of these guys that goes like, oh, if something's not to my taste, please change it in a patch. Now, this was the horror section of the demo, and I was looking forward to more horror like this to see where this would go, but unfortunately, in the full game, this is the only time it happens. But again, we're back to one of these procedurally generated mazes, which seemed to be the central conceit of Animiopolis now, right? The, the whole thing of like creepy, confusing mazes seems to be this game's shtick now. Uh, which, now that I, you know, once I got that in my head, once I realized this game's shtick is uh, Andrew Quist's trademark, procedurally generated backrooms type spaces, then I understood why that level was reversed and why things are kind of laid out more like they are. I still think that there, you know, those first two areas were uh, something of a problem. A really cool thing happens wandering through here. Like this is really built up. It's like first we're in like a really creepy, weird area and you're just lost. So it gives you just long enough to be like, man, I am lost. Where is this? I tend to use the exit signs as like a guide, but I think it doesn't matter which way you go. Now, you, I don't know if you can hear this, but there's like a low rumble now, like a subsonic frequency and stuff starts you know, the, the doors moving stuff starts moving on its own and there's this can you see this creeping darkness is, it, is there someone in here with me and this darkness creeping to, and here's the shadow is it there's the dude and he's i need to leave now it's really creepy man so here's the thing though in the demo if this dude, you choose, he's chasing you, he does follow you, and he goes through walls. In the demo, if he caught up with you, it would send you back to the checkpoint. So, it didn't... Here's the problem right now. Where is he? Come on, come and get me. Gets up close. Yeah. The weird thing is, he gets up close and you just get a, like a loud noise and he floats around, but nothing happens. Now, I really appreciate, in the demo, I really, really appreciated that it didn't do a blah, 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 scare, right? The, it doesn't pop up a face and scream at you or any of that stuff, because that wouldn't suit this game at all. Uh, and a lot of backrooms and liminal space games make the mistake of doing that. Even Kane Pixels, who is amazing, but it goes from the sort of, the sort of weird tranquil and confusing back rooms to a thing chasing you go ah! you know but this just this floating shadow was cool but the fact that it reset you at the checkpoint let's get out of here does he follow me into the light here no i don't think he can get into the light that's cool oh no he can there is. anyway let's go so the um yeah, it, it's interesting because the shadow figure, it, it would, if it caught you, it would just, the camera, it would fade out and then you would reappear at the start of that area, the checkpoint. So it was sort of a death. 
in a way, I thought that was really cool because it doesn't resort to go blah, 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 blah in your face, but it does show you this is a threat you don't want him to catch you. And that makes that dude scary, right? I mean, it was already pretty creepy, but the fact that it's a threat gets you on your, you know, gets you running and stuff like that. And that was cool. Now for this, the full game, I don't know uh, what the motivation was, but he, he can't hurt you anymore. It catches you, nothing happens. Kind of like the safe mode in uh, Layers of Fear 2. Stuff like that. Um, but I think I understand, because looking at it as the game focusing more on the spaces themselves, kind of driving you mad, right? The maddening confusion of these procedurally generated mazes and things being the core of the game, especially after what that GameSpot guy said and what a lot of people said about not wanting the scares. Effectively, that turns the shadow figure into just another aesthetic. He's an effect uh, and no longer a threat, which means this game has no threats and is more about the spaces themselves and it lets the spaces speak for themselves. Now, I liked the shadow dude. I liked that he chased you. I liked that he could catch you. And I was really looking forward to seeing what either the Shadow Dude or whatever was next did next. Uh, but instead, he's just a, a thing that exists in that area of the game. Uh, just as an effect, as an atmospheric effect. And uh, maybe that will improve the game for a lot of people, because obviously the GameSpot guy said about it and stuff. It is no longer You're no longer being chased by threats. There's just a weird, creepy guy that you don't feel like being near. There's just, yeah. Um, so I get it. Uh, not my preferred um, uh, answer to that, but I get it. I think that was one of my initial disappointments. Hang on. Something is very wrong. Yeah. What was in that locker room? So here's an, again, right. Check this out. Pool and spa. And we look through here, there's a door that you can't get through to more mall areas. And I assume that much like in the theater, it implied that, that I think that goes to the bit outside the, the mall bit before the theater stage. I used to love gumballs until the incident. Um, but yeah, we're back in a mall again. And that that is an entrance, isn't it? That is the entrance to the pool and spa. Where, in fact, is it a... Yeah, those are locker room entrances, men and women. Yeah, cool. So... Um, so, you know, I think when I first played the demo, it was like, yeah, I've landed in the back area of somewhere. Right? I've fallen into that panel and landed where I'm not supposed to be. And I've made my way in reverse. I've made my way out through the entrance. So it's like you were stuck somewhere and you were making your way out. And when you see the entrance and you're exiting the entrance, like, OK, I'm making progress, you know. Um, but then that's locked as well. So now we have to go out and round again in other ways. Um, and... Yeah, I keep thinking, if Animoiapolis is this place where you e enter everywhere via elevators, which you pay for with tickets, what are these entrances? And what are these mall areas that have no official entrance that you can only get to by climbing around stuff? Right? Like, I again, it may, may be to add to the mystery, but I genuinely think that we were supposed to start there, come out through here, go through the mall, and then into the theater and then wherever from there. You know, maybe end up in some office space, which is that crazy conference area. Maybe play some mini golf somewhere in the mall. Again, just I thought it would just be like areas you go to around once you're out of there and into this mall. Um, again, you were clambering around. That's, I do like the idea of, you know, getting around by going where you're not supposed to go. And look, we found a warehouse or no, this looks like it would have been a clothing store or an outlet. Oh, as it said in an outlet on it, didn't it? On the outside. Yeah. Um, so much like I said in the theater, what has this got to do with the family tropical resort? You know, it is, I feel like we've exited it by the, you know, by going up to where the lights were and climbing up the pipe along the pipes and everything, the pipes, the cables, whatever the hell they were. Surprising there's no tickets here around here. Um, and then we've landed in another part of the mall, like we did at the theater. But again, if everywhere is entered through those elevators, what is this for? Like, what is this area? What was that entrance? Um, again, I, I think that was 
think this was, we would now have been in a mall level that stretched out and then ended when we got to that theater entrance. I think that was where it was supposed to be. I love that if you come in here, you get another little, he's like, I'm watching you. I'll be back. Unfortunately, he won't be back. But it'd be nice though. I'm sorry, I'm a bit too negative. I, I still really love this game. I think there's just the, uh, what the game is versus what I thought it was going to be. Kind of disconnect. Ah, and a new room. This is one of those rooms where everything's the same color. I, it feels weird. Very, very weird. Um, this room kind of makes me think of when you're in like a like a shopping center, like a mall, and you go out to go and uh, go to the car park, and you'll often go up to a bit, and it's just these rooms with nothing in them. The back rooms, you could say, is the exit elevator. What a level that, well, oh, mwah. incredible stuff. Look, the theater I like almost as much as well. The theater stage was really magnificent. And I, I generally think that these two stages were when it was, were made when Animoiopolis was going to be one thing. And I think the rest were kind of added around it. I, I think that the developer changed his mind on what Animoiopolis was going to be, possibly based on some of the feedback we've seen, possibly just, you know, time passes, you change your mind. Uh, and also, there's only so much free time in the world, right? So tickets give you, you don't have to make quite as much stuff. To, and I remember I'd done that, I was like, oh, we're finished then, we're finished. You come here and it says, oh, is, there's another elevator. I, I do like this a lot, actually. And I do like the hub world. I did say this, but it's just, it was badly implemented at first. But I like it now. This is cool, it says one more elevator. And I was like, what's going on? Have I not finished the conference rooms properly or what? But then... Whoa, there's a new black elevator. The sign outside, it says nothing. Not, it would have been good if this cost some tickets, maybe. Uh, just because then the tickets in the last level there wouldn't be pointless. But it's the black, 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 black free access. It's like it's it's appeared. It's, it's like it's inviting you in like Silent Hill or something. Now, what I'll say now that I'm back here and I've done all those stages, here is the one thing that, in my opinion, would fix the one small change that would fix everything about that awkward opening act of this game. Although I would like to see, I would have liked the conference center and the country club to have had more in them. And I still think that, but that's, you know, the game's finished. That's a silly thing to ask for, but I think, see these. So I said how it's, there's an implied level order. I think that now there should be tickets you can pick up around here just like there are, so that the conference one shouldn't be free, like I said before. But I think that every level should cost the same number of tickets. Maybe 40, maybe 50, but they should, it should all be the same number of tickets. And you just go to the one that interests you the most first and then grab tickets from there and come back. Because anybody that remembers the demo could go straight, away, straight, straight ahead and play that pool stage again, or they could go and try one of the other ones first. But you're not like, especially the, the mini golf, where it's like, what's the point in it? I mean, it's fun, but what? But like, if every level costs the same amount of money, and it was like, it wasn't Super Mario 64 with stars, it was Mega Man, where it's like, do all of these, and then you get the final level. So that big final black elevator shouldn't be there uh, uh, at first. That big black elevator would appear after you've done all the others, or maybe after you've got, say, 400 tickets or something like that. But those doors there should all be cost the same number of tickets and you tackle them in your order. I think that would fix the game because if you're, if you, if you're in that conference area and you're lost and you're like, or you find the elevator, you're like, well, that wasn't much fun. But you're like, well, that was the level I chose to do. It's not the first level. I, I honestly think that Doing those in any order you want. There's nothing that makes. I, I realize that the, the pool and spa and the theater are much more sort of climactic. But I genuinely think that just spreading them out into whatever order would make this hub world feel meaningful as well. And it also makes the whole game feel like this sort of this underground resort, right? It's a resort. You do what you want. Come and explore but with the intent of either collecting enough tickets or whatever, just getting this thing to appear. And it also shows, it would show that the player is just looking for an, right? The, 
the, the, the not the player, the character. He's fallen in here, he's stuck in here, and he's looking for an exit, and he's just trying everywhere. He's not wandering around collecting tickets until the lift comes. He's he's still maybe there's an exit here, maybe there's an exit there. He's trying everywhere first and grabbing the tickets as he goes. You know, I, I think that that would, although there are other things that I would have changed personally, this isn't my game and it's not specifically for me, even though I think I'm its biggest fan. <laughs> I think that would be the answer. Now, the final stage, um, I'm in two minds about this stage. So this is, I still don't understand the 10 tickets to go back thing. It, there's even a sign there for it, it doesn't work. I, I'm not sure what that was. But this was, at the end of the original demo, there was an infinite bit you could explore that was similar to this, but this has gotten a whole lot creepier. Again, it's almost the back rooms, but not. And it's much creepier than any of the back rooms games, I think, including uh, the complex fan footage. This is procedurally generated, so every time you play it, it's a new maze. Unfortunately, one time I played it and the exit elevator was like around the first corner. Uh, that was a shame. Uh, maybe there needs to, there should be something in place to make it so that doesn't happen. Also, you're not stuck here for like years. <laughs> but um, so this area is super creepy. But after a while, you get numb to it because this is all it is. You're just lost, and confused. It's maddening. Again, the central conceit of the game and the backrooms concept it works. But after everything that happened in the family resort, wouldn't it be so cool if like. After wandering around here for a while, the dude came back. Could you imagine this really creepy area? And like, oh God, here he is again. And this is like your last escape from him, you know, your last stand. And, and you know, running around halls this maddening, but not being able to stop because you know the shadow guy is coming. That would have been amazing in my opinion, but uh, it's, it, it didn't work out like that. It's just, oh, there's the exit elevator. So I've not been in here for very long. So this level can sometimes be a, a really cool, like maddening being lost. Sometimes it can just be like, oh, that's it. And that's a shame. I also, I understand that the dev, you know, I've been there when I used to make games in my spare time. And sometimes you reach a point where you're just like, I want to, I just want this, this done and released. And I wouldn't blame, I don't blame them for that. But yeah, it was so cool if that, you know, if that was like, if, if the figure was there or something, as like a big finale, that would have been so cool. But, oh well. Again, I think that the horror elements are, are, are very toned down from what they were originally going to be. And I think that's in response to all those people. I don't want to be scared. I'm sorry. I know that what you're going to say, I know a lot of people will say like, well, oh, I just don't want cheap scares. Well, that wasn't a cheap scare. It was a good scare. And I know that liminal spaces can be relaxing as well as uncomfortable and weird, but that's why there's such a perfect backdrop for horror, man. You know? Please wait for more visitors to arrive for departure. All right, here we go. We have an ending. I'm just getting texts. I'm going to check what that was. That's a new last podcast on the left episode notification. And this is interesting. This is the uh, ending of chap chapter one, as they're calling it. Love, look how cool this elevator looks. Awesome. It's taking a little while. We have footsteps. There is somebody else here. Hey, I'm in this elevator. That old piano. Over here. You know, that's kind of a different thing going down there. You're, right. you're cursing to come back out. Unfortunately, your knowledge of this place is a liability. Hey, what are you talking about? Then no, 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 and then stop. Staff key card. Going to bottom floor. There we go. I love the credits coming down at the back of the elevator. Brilliant. 
And here's something nice for that. Developed by Andrew Quist. Villain voice Natalie Quist. Intercom voice Jamie Quist. That's cute. That's a family game. How nice is that? That's really, really cool. And lots of cool special thanks. I'm, I, I'm choosing to believe Itch.io horror community includes myself. <laughs> I dedicated to Jamie Quist. Beautiful. Right, well, um, that's interesting that you get an item and then it ends and then it goes to the cliffhanger, right? Like, you know, and you actually press X to take the item and everything. Again, it feels almost like there was going to be a bit more before the end of the chapter, especially with all the tickets you've accumulated in what is effectively the last level. Um, yeah, interesting. I, I Now, don't get me wrong. I love Anime Atlas. I love this game. I think my Steam re uh, review originally was not recommended. Uh, it was a it was a thumbs down, and it pained me to do that. But that day one, day two patch, rearranging the tickets, it made it work as a game. So it's a thumbs up now. Uh, the theater level is what I right when I played the demo, and I was like, oh, I want more of this. The theater level has given me what I wanted. That's more of that. It was awesome. The other stuff is also good, and it's a good backrooms game. <laughs> Uh, back room. So it's a good liminal space game. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the other content doesn't differentiate itself from, say, the complex fan footage, which is also a good game, and other and the other backrooms games in a way, in the way that the you know the theater and the pool did. And I think some of that is comes from just, you know, the developer not having uh, um, much time, and I understand that. Uh, so I'm in two minds about it, but it is it is a great game, ultimately. It has those two incredible levels and some decent backroomage around them. I feel like it maybe doesn't live up to its potential, but I understand that it didn't. As I say, if there was one change that I would make, one small change and reasonable change that I would make, it would be that all of the elevators would cost the same number of tickets because then... There would be no implied order. Uh, you could the the way the levels differ from each other would it would work, you know, like the golf course wouldn't be like, oh, have I got to do this before I can do that? No, you don't have to do it before you do anything, you know. And I think the hub world would be more meaningful then. Other than that, I think that it's a good game, uh, and these these are the best liminal spaces that exist in games. You know, the complex is cool, but that's all just recreating things that already existed right all of the photos the, the famous liminal space photos the backrooms concept the whole backrooms wiki which is ridiculous <laughs> but it, everything in that game comes from something that was somebody else's idea and nemoiopolis does liminal spaces without just stealing from the backrooms without just using other people's ideas uh without just recreating photos i remember there were some early screen caps early preview screenshots of any myopolis on the steam page which did show a couple of them showed recreations of some of the famous liminal space photos but they're not in the game these are all original and this shows that this developer understands the concept because he can create his own he doesn't have to go and reference some photos you know <clears throat> so frankly even with all of my uh my criticisms and even with all of the things that i was somewhat disappointed by compared to the demo this is by far the best liminal space game. Uh, I'd say I can't wait to see what the dev does next, but I also know that this isn't, you know, he does this in his spare time. So it's going to be a very long time, most likely. Uh, and, but it appears this game has done very well. So I guess it depends how much uh, this guy likes his job and if it's something that he just wants to pack in and do games like I did, because this has certainly done well enough to, to give him that option. Um, if you're watching, Andrew, you've done a great job. And I'm sorry to be very critical. It's a game that I've... This game just really spoke to me ever since the demo. And so everything about it, I've just come to really care about. And I'm also sorry for stanning you so much. Like, I've messaged the guy on Twitter and everything just to, like, say things, ask things about the game, say, do you need any testers? Do you want somebody to... Can I make a console port, etc.? And understandably, you know, he's like, I'm keeping it in the family, keeping it small. Uh, but man, yeah, this game just really spoke to me and less so the full game than the demo, but it's still really, really fantastic and 
developers, you should be really proud of this. Alright, bye everybody.